Fox News Radio 1270 welcomes you to Broadview, a weekly radio show that looks into the issues here in northern Nevada. Hot topics of the week, a senior moment or two, and special guests. Phone lines are open now at 823-1920. Here is your host, Jay Davis. Now I want to talk to Steve Aussie, a financial advisor in Incline Village, also co-host of Nevada Matters. You can reach him at steve at steveaussie.com. Steve, hey, hello, how are you? Hi, Jay. I'm enjoying a fine spring afternoon here in Tahoe. Finally, the snow is starting to recede, and it does feel a bit like spring. Yeah, spring on the way, although it's going to be a little cooler. Yep. Well, I wanted to get to the stock market and all the stocks and kind of money this week because everybody's worried about their pocketbook. It's been going up and down like a seesaw. Do you pick stocks for your clients, Steve? Uh, no, actually, I don't. With 6 billion people on the planet, what's the chance I'm the best stock picker? That's the, the way I feel. And even if somebody is good at picking stock, let's say like Warren Buffett of all people, well, his niche is what we call large cap value investing. And he said at times he wouldn't know how to pick a good tech stock if he saw one. So therefore, you also need to pick growth stocks, and that usually requires different skills. And then you have small company and mid-sized companies. And foreign is uh, difficult because you really have to be on the ground in foreign countries and the various kind of bonds. So no one person can be excellent at all of those in America. You know, we have this cowboy thing in our genes where we uh, think we can do everything better than the pros, and that's just not true. Uh, On a really good day for me and a really bad day for Tiger Woods, (laughs) <laughs> well, no, I probably couldn't. No, I was going to say, probably <laughs> not, but hey, probably it's good not. to dream. <laughs> a really bad day for Tiger. <laughs> well, it we, could happen. I know what you're saying, though. Right. Yeah. We we remember our successes and we forget our failures, and uh, you probably know this, too. You, everybody that goes to Vegas seems to come back basically, basically even. How does that work, and how do they build those places, I wonder? I would have no idea. I've never come back even from Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> An honest woman. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, how do you do it then? What do you do? A lot of advisors use their firms to pick the stocks, and but there's not a lot of good data on the analyst, and there's no real track record. So sometimes also firms have conflicts of interest when they recommend stocks, especially if they do what's called underwriting. Uh, analysts become cheerleaders of the stocks rather than really providing an uh, objective analysis. So I use professional money managers in their various forms, mutual funds, ETFs, and so forth. Professionally managed, lots of resources, they have track records, and then I seek to find managers that compared to everybody else that manages in the same style that are at the top of the pack. And I create a team of these managers and cover all the various in- investment asset classes, as we call them, and then I manage those managers. Well, now, if uh, most of them are such great managers, why do you need to be managed at all? Well, that's a good point. Well, a manager named Bill Miller, he was with the Leg Mason Fund, and he beat the S&P for 15 years in a row. He was a real rock star among money managers. But in the financial collapse, he had made a heavy bet on financial stocks, and he broke his 15-year record, and in fact, he was one of the worst that year. So I watch managers, and if they can stay on the top of the pack, they're among the best in their category. If they can stay there, uh, I'll keep them. If after a quarter or two, somehow they slip behind, maybe they have new personnel or something, then I'll fire the manager and put somebody else in. A money manager will never call you and tell you, why don't you move your money over to XYZ? They're doing better than me. And money managers never go to cash. And sometimes I think you just got to do that. And that's what I like. I like the cash, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, cash cash doesn't grow by itself, though. If you hide your money under a mattress in a few years, you'll be able to buy a half a loaf of bread rather than a full loaf. Yeah, it doesn't multiply on its own, does it? Nope. So what do you say to those who feel that they need uh, to get out of the market or it's too risky for them right now? Uh huh. And I think it is. Well, there are places in the world where economies are stronger than ours are. But, boy, in America, I have great concerns. We have these huge trade deficits and budget deficits. Our government is just addicted to spending. Real estate is not recovering. In fact, it's getting back down to the lows, and some say we may be headed down even further, and that would be uh, tragic. Our dollar has been falling in relationship to other currencies for many years. The stupidest thing, I think, is that we're actually printing money and then buying our own bonds, which is like you writing a check to yourself and then spending it. I've done that. (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. (laughs) And then the S&P, we talked about this a while back, gave a negative outlook on America's bonds, and we may lose our AAA status in a couple of years, and that's not going to be a good thing. I think America is either on the cliff or maybe over it hanging on to a branch so that we can't just look to investing in the U.S., the old 60-40, 60% stocks, 40% U.S. bonds is not going to work. 
So we need diversification. Uh, Europe has plenty of problems, but there are plenty of places in the world that have strong economies. And we also need to invest in things that in the past only institutions could invest in, like private equities, commodities, metals, real estate, and other so-called alternative asset classes. So for some time now, I've been shifting people into new sorts of investments that I think are better positioned for going forward. And everyone should have their advisor take another look at their portfolio and uh, see if it's up to the the job for what's coming ahead of us. Boy, it sure is a job of staying on top of all the research. So many changes, you know. Yes. Well, the last 10 years hasn't been great for the stock market as I see it. Do you agree? Right, right. Since 2000, we've had two collapses in the market that were 50% or more on the S&P, which is one measure of the market. So depending on when you start counting, Most people are either flat or down, but this has been one of the few 10-year periods where the market hasn't done well for investors. So what do you do, just ride it out? Yeah, you know, our industry loves to say things like, stay invested for the long term, and you can't get out of the market now, you miss a recovery, and you, you can't time the market. And I think those are just stupid, actually. I think our industry has some self-serving reasons to say all of that. But look, the the market hit a high in in the fall of 2000, and then it fell uh, till 2002, lost 50 percent, and it took two years. That was a two year two year period where the market went mostly down. Wouldn't you think that at some point after two years, somebody would say, "Hey, this boat's sinking. Let's get into the lifeboats." Yeah. But most advisors don't do that. And then from fall of 2007 to March of 2009, we had a 58 percent drop in about 18 months. And, uh, you know, you just take too many hits and you're going to hit the mat at some point. So I, I don't follow the short-term trends. I'm what's called a technical analyst. And even simple moving averages, as we call them, or trend indicators, were very useful during these two periods uh, in the last 10 years to say that we were in a downtrend and we probably want to be out. So I'll, I'll never pick a bottom or a top. Anybody who sells that, you ought to just move on because they're not telling them the truth. But if I can avoid 80% of the downtrend or maybe get 80% of the recovery, I'm a pretty happy guy, and so would my clients. Tell me what happened on Wall Street this week. Well, this week the uh, CPI number came out, uh, inflation. Uh, It was at a a two-and-a-half-year high, so that's part of the reason why the market was off today. Uh, They say it's at 3.2%, and that's what the government admits to. You might notice, though, that they usually talk about inflation, and they made this change 10, 15 years ago, where they say excluding the volatile food and energy sector, and then they quote that number. But, you know, if you don't eat and you don't drive, I guess you don't care if if you exclude that. But to you and I, uh, costs are really going up. The government doctors the CPI numbers. uh, The real inflation is probably more like 6%. Wow. But the problem is it's coming into the system. All of the things we've been doing, all of the deficits, I think inflation is going to hit America in a big way, and we've got to be poised to keep ahead of that with our investments. Consumer sentiment came out this week, and it had increased. I think today's market was the European crisis and the inflation. We're at a very dangerous point. Uh, I think people need someone who's very proactive to manage their portfolio and uh, strategies designed to protect their downside. Absolutely. It's getting pretty scary. Give me kind of a wrap-up of everything from this week and what you're feeling. Well, I've uh, said on your show a couple times now that on the S&P, one measure of the market, like the Dow's and another one, that uh, 1344 uh, was a very key number. And we hit it twice and and bounced back down. And we hit it uh, a few months ago, and we bounced ahead. And I thought we might be okay, but then we came back down. I I know where the lines in the sand are. I just don't know who's going to win the battle. So it's very key. If the market goes up, uh, I'm all in. If the market comes down very far and I have other levels, then I think it's time to head for the hills. How could they get a hold of you if they want to get some more information or check their portfolio with you? Uh, SteveAussie.com, A-U-S-E. I, I also go by the name of the retirement specialist. So if you uh, Google retirement specialist here in Incline, uh, people can find me there as well. You'll be there. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate you. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Jay. Nice Have talk. a good one. Bye-bye. Don't go away. We'll be back for a Broadview replay right here on Fox News.